and welcome to Bosch at the CES 2021. Good to have you all, well at least in a digital sort of way. You know why? The pandemic has been, still is, a major challenge for all of us and it has already changed the world, unintentionally boosting digitalization all across the globe. That's an amazing opportunity for tech companies to come up with the next generation of AI-driven solutions that make our everyday life even more comfortable. And as one of the leading tech companies, Bosch is always one step ahead. So in this session, I have the pleasure to reveal two groundbreaking AI-based innovations. The first one is a truly versatile self-learning smart sensor for fitness applications. And for this one, we will talk to our expert, Kaustop. Hi, Kaustop. How are you? Hi, Helene. I'm good, thanks. Talk to you later. And the second innovation will definitely revolutionize the security camera industry worldwide. For this, we will talk to our expert, Zina. Hi there, Zina. How's it going? Hi. Um, yeah, it's actually going great over here. So these two product experts will give us some deeper insights into the products and solutions. Are you eager to find out more? I'm sure you are. Let's go and start with the first part. If there is a delightful trend that has been kicking in, in 2020, it's fitness. Boy, never have we been in better shape. But now we are taking it to the next level. Bosch just developed a game-changing sensor that gets smarter while helping you get fitter, learning all about your favorite exercises. I know what you're thinking now. Can I still skip app day without the device noticing it? Well, I'm not so sure. But come on, let's talk to Kaustop. He's behind all this. Hi there, Kaustop. How Hi. are you doing? I'm good, thanks. You are looking fit and in good shape. Have you already been exercising today? No, not really. You got me. <laughs> well, you can get away with it. So um, straight to the point. I'm here with our CES visitors, and we want to find out about the world's first self-learning AI sensor, right? So why did you put so much energy and time into developing a product for the fitness market? Well, what really counts in life? Is it number of likes? Is it fame? Is it money? At least this year has taught us that the most important thing in life is personal fitness and immunity. And we have seen a lot of people putting a lot of emphasis around the globe on how to find out what is my level of fitness and my level of Im immunity. And our Bosch approach is invented for life. So we constantly look for opportunities or, or ways of how we can really improve everyday life for all of us together. And that's where we, we looked at what are the challenges that people face in their fitness tracking and how we can solve them. What can we do? That's a beautiful approach. So as I gather, there's a really fast growing market for fitness trackers? Yes, absolutely. This year alone, over 400 million people bought a new tracking device mainly for tracking their personal fitness, and it's only growing. So um, what do users really expect? And most important of all, what's fresh and exciting and new about the Bosch AI tracker? Well, in the age of AI, users expect a lot. So the beginners uh, of fitness actually expect that a tracking device automatically identifies their style of doing, what is that they're trying, trying to do, and also helps them to give some, get some feedback about this. Whereas the one who are uh, actually uh, experienced in doing fitness, they are trying to challenge themselves with new types of activities, with, uh, with new ways of doing things, and also something that makes them, uh, makes them more difficult in doing these activities. Now, across the board, what we see is that 
a lot of people are actually concerned about their privacy of data. That is to say that, um, is their data secure enough? In Who can access it? And so on. And most importantly, they are actually looking for devices that can stay for a longer duration uh, without needing to, to be charged again. So uh, how can this new system help me then in my, in my daily routine, in my workout? Well, let's take a quick example of this. So here is Luisa. She is actually a busy graphics professional sitting most of the time of her day in front of a computer and has a lot of stressful job. Now, to stay energized and yet creative, what she does is that she takes um, a quick good morning workout at home with different styles of doing uh, activities, be it jumping jacks, squats, push-ups, and so on. And then, during the day, in the afternoon, she takes breaks from, uh, with different types of activities, such as um, arm swings, or cross-leg toe touches, or kicks, and so on. And these are the types of activities which the sensor was not originally programmed for, but yet still is being tracked. So it looks pretty easy. So do I have uh, to push a button every time I start this, or does it all work automatically? Well, that's the beauty of an always-on sensor. The always-on sensor continuously monitors what you are doing passively without having any interruption to your activities, and yet identifies correctly what is the type of activity that you are doing, and then starts counting that type of activity. So does this basically mean you can track any activity, basically an unlimited number of exercises, that sounds excellent. How does that work? Yes, so the sensor comes with a built-in learning and personalization function. So this built-in learning and personalization function learns new activities. So for example, if the sensor was not programmed for a certain type of activity, you can actually train the sensor or the system or the device for this type of activity and then use it for tracking purposes. No additional modification needed. Sounds good. So can this sensor really learn my individual personal style? Yes, absolutely. So it can learn your style and it can also give you feedback on your style. So that's a real game changer then. True. It is. Um, one more thing, how precise is it? I mean, which movements can it distinguish? Well, um, let's get back to Luisa again. Once in a week, she also goes for strength training. And in strength training, you know, there are uh, weights which need to be handled carefully. And this sensor can not only tell what is the type of activity that you are doing, it can also tell, thanks to its orientation function, whether you are doing the activity in the correct style. So for example, when she is doing bicep curls, the sensor exactly tells whether this is a palm face bicep curl or whether this is a pure real bicep curl, whether she has turned her hand properly or not, with all these nuances in detail. That is amazing. That's how precisely it works, okay? So I often like to listen to music to keep me motivated. So are there ways to connect earphones to the sensor? Yes, this sensor um, actually can also be part of your earphones. And once it is part of that, it can be trained for all those activities which can be tracked while you're listening to music. And do I get instructions or music or both? How does it work? Right, so you don't have to skip music. The music can actually motivate you while doing music, while doing the fitness. And yet you can have foreground fitness tracking types of activities and also the number of repetitions and so on. I do like that, I have to admit. Hmm. So uh, I know you grazed already on data security, but this is a very important issue for all of us. So how can I be sure my data is really safe? Well, this is a single system and package. That is, you have sensors, elements over there, accelerometer, gyroscope, and also the microcontroller and AI software, everything built in. That is, if once this sensor starts tracking your activities, there is no need for the data to actually leave the device which is, which is tracking this. So, all excellent news for us, the users, but uh, what's in for the manufacturers? 
For the manufacturers, this system and package comes with a complete set of self-learning function which can actually cut the design time and the time to market. So manufacturers don't have to spend lots of effort on collecting huge amount of data, labeling them, cutting them manually, and then implementing statistical features. The self-learning function, which is the next generation of AI, automatically identifies what is really required to track these type of activities. And not only does it identify the activity, it also starts counting it. And this comes uh, with the set of, with the possibilities of having a huge number of activities. So for manufacturers, it is a huge uplift in the, in the functionality, in the end user experience, and also their own time to market. So you really make it easy for everyone. What else comes with this new AI sensor? This new AI sensor also comes with tracking of how you're moving in the sense of position tracking. So if you're moving, if you're going on a walk, if you're going for a jog, running and so on, this sensor identifies your route and helps to build that route together with the GPS. Additionally, it can also do swimming analytics. That is, it can find out how many laps you are making in the swimming, which style are you actually doing during the swimming, and also the stroke counts and so on. Lovely. Kaustop, thank you so much for so wonderfully introducing the world's first self-learning AI sensor for fitness tracking. Oh, one last thing. What is the thing you love most about this sensor? Well, it's AI in my hands and it can track my workout. Thank you so much, Kaustub. Bye. Bye. So the use of artificial intelligence opens up a wide range of possibilities. Now we're up to date when it comes to our personal fitness. But what about business or public solutions that use the power of AI? I mean, we are already able to act much more efficiently based on big data analysis. But if there's a sector that has grown exponentially during the last years with an additional boost by the crisis, it is video software. I'm really curious about what might be possible by combining this kind of software with AI. So let's meet Sina again for the next big innovation. Hello, Sina. So we're here to find out more about security and safety things. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah, it's actually going great. So can you give us a quick overview of your business division? Oh, I'd love to. First of all, Security and Safety Things is not a division, but a fully owned subsidiary of Bosch. We are part of Bosch's strategic investment in new digital growth markets. Own company name, own brand appearance. We have around 130 experts from more than 25 nationalities that are working closely together to shape the future of security cameras. So security cameras and the matching software are the main business. Isn't this a pretty complex and fast changing field? You bet it is. No one can guarantee security on their own. It's something that you have to achieve through collaboration. With our platform, we are building an ecosystem connecting all stakeholders in the industry. But as you can see, the need for smart solutions on the video software market are expected to be skyrocketing towards 2025. The market size by then will roughly be at 2.3 billion US dollars, which is a yearly growth rate of 24%. And one thing's for sure, we are prepared for this. So I have to admit, I'm not exactly an expert in this field. So could you be so kind and give me just a super short crash course to understand this technology better? Of course. The IoT ecosystem from security and safety things consists of four components. First, an open Android-based operating system that serves as the common basis for security cameras from different manufacturers. Second, a portal for developers with tools for development and testing. Third, we have an application store with ready-to-use apps that can be flexibly combined even on a single camera. And fourth, a portal for integrators that allows the management of cameras, an application, and provides knowledge about innovative solutions available within the ecosystem. 
So, in a nutshell, you are creating an open platform using the Android system for security cameras. So, what can you actually do with, it, do with it? Like, will we, as regular people, get in touch with this on a regular basis? Of course we will. Well, just pick a parking lot, for example, where a smart camera tracks your car automatically by scanning your license plate as soon as you enter the parking lot. You don't need to get a ticket. You don't need to wait at the barrier. Just park your car, go shopping, and when you leave, you easily pay with your smartphone. How convenient is that? And that's just one example. Super easy, super simple. So the smart software turns every camera into a smart device? As easy as that. Think of a retail store. Right now, the cameras in there are just recording. Any kind of evaluation or analytics has to be done manually afterwards. Using AI software, all shop owners can track how many people are in the store at real time. The software will also warn you if there's a potential theft going on. You also have the possibility to check your store and order supplies at the right moment, for example, as well. So, from a retailer's point of view, does it really pay off to invest in this new technology? Yes, it definitely does. Well, we know that times are tough for retailers right now. E-commerce has made it extremely difficult for brick and mortar retailer stores to maintain a competitive edge with their online competitors. At the same time, operating costs for, um, for labor and, uh, and rent are rising. And even more recently, the pandemic has driven retailers to face brand new challenges as well. Smart video technology, using a combination of apps from our application store, can help address these challenges. For example, smart cameras can identify customer behavior patterns so you can optimize your in-store sales. And you can also improve your store layout based on heat mapping insights. Or you can also adapt your product portfolio based on demographic data of your store visitors. And additionally, you can also comply with the latest health guidelines concerning COVID-19, such as face mask detection and occupancy store management. So I get it. Retailers want more insights into their customers' behavior. I mean, this is also true for other industries as well. So do you cooperate with other sectors, for instance, automotive? Yes. Traffic is a major topic. City streets and sidewalks are becoming more and more crowded. This is a challenge for city planners and senior traffic engineers. They really need to improve mobility, safety and roadway efficiency. We also have parking management apps to help monitor, enforce and optimize parking lots, for example, as well. Whether your objective is vehicle identification, vehicle behavior or traffic analytics, apps can provide very good decision-making insights that are data-driven. So, what other benefits could smart software deliver in urban areas? Cities will be able to derive traffic flow and predict congestion or analyze traffic over time and in real time as well. We can detect pedestrians in a crosswalk or identify fallen objects on roads, vehicles driving in the wrong lane. We can also detect a flooded street, for example. And it's also possible to classify models and types to gain a better understanding of what's really going on on the street and who is driving there. So that makes traffic a lot safer, right? Can you make other places safer too? Stadiums, for instance, are a massive challenge for security and safety. Yeah, all entertainment facilities pose security challenges, but stadiums are definitely top of the list. These facilities have to manage incredibly demanding situations as there are thousands of people coming together. Smart software can transform your stadium security cameras into smart IoT devices with apps from our application store. This can help to detect suspicious visitor behavior and generate alerts. But you can also display waiting times in food corners by using queue detection apps. So that means processing an impressive amount of data. What benefits are there to gain? 
Well, we can use AI to ensure that events take place smoothly and safely by protecting fans from hooliganism. We can keep an eye on blacklisted visitors and alert staff in such a case as well. Queue detection can also steer visitors to other open cashiers to avoid um, over-occupancy and really long waiting times. It helps drivers to park easier and better with license plate recognition and occupancy control in parking lots as well. And also, with a future-proof camera network, you can quickly and flexibly adapt to new and unexpected challenges such as COVID-19. So it seems like you're revolutionizing the whole industry, Zina. What expectations do you have for the future? We believe that open marketplaces democratize software distribution and implementation across many industries in the future. For the video surveillance market, this will yield more competitive pricing as it removes entry barriers. But most importantly, we will also allow more innovative and relevant use cases. So what does that mean for users and for integrators? We will see an increased flexibility through low integration efforts. It's possible to update software fast and cost effective. And even repurposing of cameras is possible with only a few clicks. I'm also sure that we will be seeing much more niche applications as well. It will also become normal to have a decentralized project architecture where software runs on the edge instead of only running on cloud or servers. Really interesting insights, Sina. Thanks. Anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, sure. So if there are any video analytics application developers out there, get in touch with us. The same applies to end users as well, for example, retailers. I'm pretty sure we can help you solve your challenges. Thank you so much for spending time with us, Zina. And uh, goodbye, have a good one. Bye. So thank you all for your interest. And if you want, check out the other Bosch videos and product materials here at the CES. And stay healthy, curious, and handle the new year like a Bosch. Thank you.